Hey everybody, Mike here, and today I'm going to be playing Judge Dredd, The Cursed Earth. This is a re-implementation of the Lost Expedition rule set, except placed in the Judge Dredd universe and with a couple of rules changes. You begin the game by setting out your three judges, who are Dredd, Giant, and Anderson, each of which has a specialty. Dredd is good at pathfinding and survival, Giant is good at diplomacy, Anderson has psychic abilities. Each of these judges starts with five health tokens on them. If they lose them all, they're dead. And you also get four ammo tokens and three food tokens as a communal supply for the entire team of judges. The game progresses through a series of dawn and dusk rounds, but you're beginning with dawn. The objective of the game is for your judges to reach and find Max Normal, who's basically carrying a plague that you want to find the cure for. At least that's the most I can tell, having not read the graphic novel this is based on. And you want to get there before the perps reach max normal, so if uh, their pawn gets to him before your pawn gets to him, you lose the game. To set up the location deck, you shuffle all the location cards, and you remove as many as you want for your chosen difficulty. So I'm going to remove three cards, that's easy mode because this game is so challenging, I don't think I can do any better. Then you take two location cards and you shuffle max normal in with them, so you're not quite sure which one he is. And all of those go on the bottom of the deck. Finally, you lay out three initial locations. And the perps start with a head start, so they're on the one closest to the deck. And uh, just to be clear, you're going from left to right. And the judges start on the one furthest back. Now, some locations have abilities when you arrive at them. Some locations have abilities when you reveal them. Uh, some locations have abilities each turn you stay on them. So in this case, the Nebraska Fault does one damage. I can take that on any of my judges, so I'm going to damage Judge Giant, leaving him with four life left. Also note Terra Haute's pass ability, when revealed, reveal the next card in the location deck, which is Muty Country. When revealed, add one ammunition token to the space, and basically when somebody tries to move away from that space, they're going to remove the ammunition token instead, which is good for me because the perps will probably be the one doing that for me. The final step of setup is to shuffle the 60 encounter cards and draw six for your initial hand. The basic idea of the game is I'm going to play three of these cards during the dawn phase, and I'm going to have to resolve them in a particular order, trying to mitigate the worst effects and benefit from the best effects. Then I'll play the other three cards in the dusk phase, but in solo there's also going to be cards coming from the deck that I'll have to deal with. Now to explain the icons we've got here, yellow icons are events. When the card is resolved, you have to do them from left to right. Red boxes are choices. I must choose to resolve one box of effects or the other. Finally, blue boxes are entirely optional. I can choose to do them or not. In the dawn phase, you begin by drawing two cards from the deck and laying them out. The cards are always going to be organized from lowest to highest value going left to right. So looking at the two cards I've drawn, I've got improvising, which will force us to fight. And to fight, we can either discard an ammo token if we have one, or we can take two damage to one of our judges, which is pretty terrible, so you want to hope you have ammo. Then this card goes underneath the judge with the survival skill, which is Dread, and becomes a free survival skill use for him to use later. Compare that to the Dust Storm in my hand, which has a black circle around it. That means I need to spend a survival to survive the Dust Storm, whereas again, the improvising gives me a survival. Geyser is going to deal one damage to one of my judges, and then I can choose to let the perps advance one to switch the location of any two cards in the line and discard the card at the end of the line. And that's not too useful on this card because this number is so high. It's the second highest number out of a deck of 60. That the chance of anything being to the right of it and being able to be discarded is pretty low. I now have to play two cards from my hand and each of them is going to get ordered in the line based on its number. So it might go in between the two cards that are already there, it might go to the left, it might go to the right. I'll follow that by playing a third card from the deck and finish with playing one more card from my hand. That'll make a line of six cards that I have to resolve in left to right order. Now let's talk about some other icons in my hand. This icon is using psychic ability, which means I can either just add a random card to the end of the line, or I can spend one health from Anderson to use her psychic ability. Then I draw four cards, keep two of them, and discard the other two. Which is generally really powerful because I can get rid of uh, some really nasty cards and keep the ones that are more helpful to me. So I might want to play this just to kind of make this dawn go a little bit longer. Dust Storm, as you saw on the geyser, this lets me switch the location of two cards. But I have to let the perps advance one or I can spend one survival. Now I showed you the icon on improvising that lets you spend a survival for free. If I don't have a card like this, 
then kind of like the psychic ability for Anderson, I have to spend one health from the appropriate judge, Judge Dredd in this case. If Judge Dredd is dead, I have to spend two health from a different judge, which is uh, really not a good option. Okay, the Bruja territory, it does one damage to me. It lets me move forward one. And don't forget, I have to move through the locations to find uh, the normal guy and win the game. And then I do two psychics, which uh, could be good or bad. Old World Ruins is generally a nice card. I have to take one radiation, which is pretty much another form of damage, but I get a free food, or I can change the location of two cards. Local Dispute, if I spend a Diplomacy, and since I don't have a card, that would cost one health from Judge Giant, my Diplomat. I get a free food. Or if I fight, which again requires discarding a bullet or taking two damage, I would get a Diplomacy, so this would go underneath Judge Giant and give me a free Diplomacy use later. Finally, Hungry Muties, I can give them two food to let me move forward one, or I can take a rad damage to discard the next card. So this is one we haven't seen yet, so I discard the very next card next to this and don't resolve it. So the first card I'm going to play is the Bruja Territory. I love uh, cards that move me forward, that's how I win the game. And the two psychic could actually be good because I might be able to get some good cards at the end of the line. And secondly, I'm going to play Hungry Muties to also move. I've got three food right now and I've got several ways to potentially generate food later, so I'm not too worried about having enough food yet. Going back to our line, I organize these by number, so both go to the left of Improvising and Geyser, and will be resolved first as I progress through these six cards. Note, by the way, that that's just a rule for the dawn. When we get to the dusk, you'll see that the ordering of cards is totally different. I now draw a third card from the deck. Oh, snared. So Judge Dread can take one damage. I can use an ammo, or I can let the perps move one. And that's a five, so it's going right at the front. And I get to play a final card. I'm going to go ahead and get some food from the Old World Ruins, I think. I know that that's number 17, so it slots in to the middle of the cards in between 5 and 26. Okay, so now I actually start my Dawn turn, which is called an Investigation. So first got to do the Snare. I can either do a damage to Dread, I can shoot someone, or let the perps advance. In this case, I'm going to use Dread's survival ability to get out of the snare, doing one damage to him. Remember, if he had had a card underneath him with the survival symbol, he would not have had to take the damage. He could have just discarded the card. I resolved one of the three red choices, so this card is done, and I get out of the snare. Next, I can explore the Old World Ruins. And look, there's a mall with some food there, but I'm going to have to do some radiation damage to someone. I'll go ahead and put the radiation damage on Judge Giant. Now how this works is it's pretty much like taking a damage because if my radiation ever exceeds the number of health I have remaining, that character also dies. So right now if Judge Giant took four more radiation, bringing him to five more than his four health, he would die. But as your health goes down, your radiation becomes more dangerous, and again it's a kind of a secondary way for you to be defeated. Now because Judge Giant went into the Old World Ruins, he's able to find a food for me, which is great. It's going to give me something to feed those mutants in a moment. Now, speaking of the muties, I can either give them some food to move forward in my investigation, or I can take some red to skip the next card. But I kind of like the next card, letting me move as well, so I'm going to give them some food. Judge Dredd is a generous person, and he will share with his mutant brethren. So this moves the judges one forward to Brunner's Warp Lands. And note that if I start a uh, turn in this space, I'll take a radiation. But luckily, I'm about to move again from the Bruja territory. Next we go to the Bruja territory, I have to do one damage to somebody, and I'm going to pick Judge Dredd since he doesn't have any radiation on him. We get to advance our Judge Pawn one space, and that ties us with the perps. Hi, how you doing guys? And then I have to resolve two Psy Icons. Remember, for each of these I can either take a chance and add a card to the end of the line for free, or I can have Judge Anderson take one damage to uh, draw four cards and pick two of them to add. So something I notice is that I can let the perps advance to switch the location of two cards and then discard the card furthest to the right, which means I have some mitigation if I draw something really bad. So I'm going to use one of these Psy Icons just to add a card, and then I'll use the next one with Judge Anderson to add two more cards of my choice. So here's our free card for the first Psy Icon. Oh, pushing forward. So it's another movement one, which is great. That's going to be toward winning the game, but one radiation and spending one food, and I got to spend a radiation automatically, so basically I'm walking through an irradiated, terrible place, uh, so not sure if I'll do that. And then Judge Anderson's going to get all psychic with it for the second Psy symbol, and I draw four cards, and I get to resolve two of them. And oh man, this is not a great draw because um, several of these cards are actually really good. Toxic Ground does do two to, uh, radiation damage, but I get to move. 
Endless Slog is kind of a nothing card. It does two damage to judges, but then heals two damage, which actually lets you kind of reassign the damage between your judges. Tollbridge, I have to fight with one of my bullets and then get punched by the troll anyway, but I can move. And finally, the Psychic Dog, I can either, <laughs> I think, eat him <laughs> to get some food, or maybe just eat his food, but I have to let the perps advance, or I can feed him to get a Psychic ability and get a Survival Icon for Dread to use later. Well, the name of the game is Movement, so I'm going to take the two that move me and uh, let those two other fairly positive cards go away. Now, when you take a health from Anderson to use Psychic Power, regardless of whether it's Dawn or Dusk, you automatically add the two cards at the end of the line in numerical order with each other, not caring about the cards to the left and their numerical order. Okay, so now we're improvising, and we're going to, uh, I guess, shoot this uh, little lowlander, but find out some survival secrets from him. And note that I slot this card underneath Judge Dredd, and now he has a free use of survival that will not take one of his health to use. And now an explosive geyser injures Judge Giant. He's down to three health and one radiation. And I could let the perps advance to move some cards and get rid of the last one, but hey, forget that. Let's just keep on walking. Okay, we're going to push forward one automatic radiation and then another one and a food. I've got only two food left, and there's one of them to walk again. I'm going to spread the radiation between my judges. One radiation is basically meaningless because, again, it has to exceed your health. So if you're down to zero health, then it's not going to matter anyway. But it will build up pretty quickly. And that means we get to advance to Mutie Country. I'll note, by the way, that locations that you've both already passed no longer have an effect. So you can just discard them as you move past them, simplifying the number of locations you have to keep track of. So I might have made a bit of a tactical error here because Mutie Country, the next time I move, instead of actually moving, I'm just going to get this ammo token. So <laughs> if I had let the perps move twice before I got here, that might have been a good thing because then they would have gotten rid of that and I could have just run straight through. Now the next card, Toxic Ground, note that it is an option to take two radiation damage to move again. But in for a penny, in for a pound, let's go ahead and irradiate my guys to go ahead and do it. And that gets me the ammo from Muti Country, giving me four ammo total. After my excursion through the Toxic Swamp, I meet a horrific troll guarding a troll bridge. I'll shoot him with the ammo I just got, but he's not quite dead, so... So I guess I'll take a damage from Judge Anderson. Ugh, oh, man, she's really hurting. But that lets me move one more time, walking over his bridge. Thanks for the shortcut. Now, whenever you or the perps would advance to a blank space, you draw the next card. And I'll note that there are six cards remaining before I move. And remember, uh, the normal guy that I'm trying to chase down will be in the bottom three. Okay, Sauron Valley. At the end of every investigation, if the Satanist card, and he's terrible, is in the discard pile, shuffle it into this deck. So he's not, so that's going to have no effect. I'm fine with that. Now, I have no cards remaining, so my Dawn Investigation is finished. I do have to spend one food at the end of every investigation, which is one reason that using Psychic Powers to extend the investigation is good, because you delay the spending of food. But I am out of food now, so uh, basically anytime I need to spend food and I can't, I take one radiation instead, and you know how much radiation I already have. That means we're going into the Dusk phase, and let me explain how this works differently. So this time I have fewer options, only three cards, but I have a lot more control. I have to play one of my three to start, forming the beginning of the line, and then every card that comes after has to either go to the left or the right of that initial card played, so it'll extend either to the left or the right. In addition to the three cards in my hand, I'm going to play three cards from the deck, and they also have to go to the left or the right, and I can choose whether they go on uh, either side after I see what the card is. I choose the order of which cards I play, but I do have to play one of mine to start it off. In this case, I'm going to put out the local dispute. I plan to just shoot the guys and get some diplomacy cred for free. Although, hmm, I could take a damage to Judge Giant to get some food, but hopefully we'll get some food elsewhere. But I'm going to go ahead and put this out first. So I start the line here, and now again I'll have to add cards to the left or the right of the line, one by one, coming from the deck or from my hand. Now I've got foreboding, which can let the rightmost card go away just by letting the uh, perps advance, although it is after using a psychic, so I won't know what the rightmost card is. So, uh, I'm not too worried about putting some random cards down. Let's go and do one from the deck first. Yeesh, Neon Gulch. So I can, I have to go down into the Neon Gulch, filled with radiation. Two more radiation. Oh, that's going to be really close to killing me. But I get to discard the rightmost card and move. So, yeah, I definitely want that to be further to the right so I can maybe deal with it or get rid of it. Okay, I'm going to do another one from the deck. Oh, no, food. 
dog vultures. So they will eat one food, which I don't have, so that'll be a radiation. And then if I give them a food, they'll get rid of the rightmost card, or I can shoot them. Okay, you're going on the right too, dog vultures. Not sure how I'm going to deal with you with no food. And again, the two cards I have left in my hand allow me to deal with cards, so I'm just going to play this one too. Wounded Dino. Okay, this is actually pretty good. I can either shoot him and I have three bullets or take a damage, but then I have to let the perps advance and I get two food from eating the dino if I want to. So that's great. I'm going to put that early. So I've got two cards left for Boating and Dust Storm, both of which are kind of better on the left side. So I'm going to let those stay on the right. Let's see. Dust Storm lets me switch where two cards are if I let them advance, which I probably will, although I do have a free survival. For Boating, I'm going to put that first. Because then I can use Dust Storm to move where the uh, cards that come from the Psychic of Foreboding will show up. And hopefully kind of mitigate stuff a bit. So Psychic, I can either take one damage from Anderson, which would put her one damage from death. Because either a Radiation or losing another health would kill her. Or I can just add a card to the end of the line. And I think I'm going to take that second option. Especially since I can let the perps advance one. And I'm already ahead of them by quite a bit to get rid of the card I just drew if it's bad. And the new card is... Definitely bad. Pinned down. <laughs> so I guess it's kind of a either or kind of a thing. I can get rid of it to let the perps advance or I can let the perps advance. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it and uh, let the perps advance. They move up and are now one behind me in Muty Country. Okay, so now I got to deal with the dust storm. I can either let the perps advance to switch where two cards are or I can spend a survival. Now I'll note that the cycling of cards is optional. So if I like where everything is, I don't have to use that. But I could still like choose this option if I didn't want to do the survival card. But since Dread has a survival available, and I don't really mind where the cards are in order, because I'm probably going to use the Neon Gulch and irradiate myself to get rid of these Dog Vultures, I'm just going to get rid of Dread's improvising card from earlier to survive the Dust Orb. Dread knows a secret from that mutant we fought that gets us through unscathed. We now get to the Wounded Dino, and I'm certainly going to put him out of his misery and spend some time letting the perps advance to get two more food. So we are now both hanging out on Sauron Valley. And I've got some damaged and irradiated judges, but two food and two bullets left. All right, now I get into a local dispute. I can either talk to them, which in this case would take one damage from Judge Giant to get a food, but I have some food, or I can shoot to get some respect and a diplomacy card. I think I'm going to take that option, leaving me with only one ammo left, which is bad because if you have no ammo, don't forget fighting does two damage, which is devastating, will make me lose. So hopefully not too much more fighting will come up. But I'm going to get this as a free diplomacy use on Judge Giant. The locals are going to spread some uh, news about what a great guy he is and let us pass hopefully later. And now we get to my potential death. We're jumping into a neon gulch. So uh, note that we're going to take two rad damage, get rid of the dog vultures entirely so they won't eat all our food, and we're going to advance again. The two rads are really putting us in a pinch. I'm going to put them both on Judge Giant since he has a free use of his ability. Because if they go on either of the other ones and then they use their ability taking one damage, they'd be dead. So at least this gives me a little bit of flexibility, but not much. And to finish out the Dusk Investigation, I advance onto the Tulsa Melts. Okay, anytime a team at this location takes a violence action, that's when you, uh, <laughs> you fight and shoot somebody, every team at this space immediately takes a wound. Maybe it's good that I'm almost out of uh, ammo because apparently they don't want me to shoot around here. Okay, we're switching back from dusk to dawn, and that costs us one of our two food. We're going to draw two random cards from the deck to start the line. Judge Station, this is a almost entirely positive one. We can either spend a food to move or take two, or uh, sorry, heal two damage, but letting the perps move. And then Exposure, a generally, well, not too negative. It discards the rightmost card, but also takes a rad damage. So looking at our six cards, we've got Razor Weed, gives Judge Dread a survival, but does a damage to us. Mutant Herd, one radiation and lets us fight for food. That's not great. Campfire, a psychic and one rad to move. That's pretty great. Or I can heal one. Meditating, a psychic and a change, or a discard the next card and then a psychic. Abandoned Bunker? Man, I'm getting a lot of positive cards. This is really great. Look, I can spend a Survival or do a Damage to Dread to move one. And finally, Spoiled Rations. That's purely bad. So man, I think I might just try to rush it and win this turn by using all of my movement abilities one by one. So that'd be this and this. Although, ah darn, the Exposure is going to discard the card to the right of it, which means if it's Campfire, I'll lose a great card. Ooh, but Meditating is 41, and Exposure 
is 48. So there's a really good chance that that's actually going to be next to exposure, and I'll be able to use this option to get rid of exposure and then just add a psychic afterwards. So yeah, with that in mind, I'm going to play both the Abandoned Bunker and Meditating, one to hopefully let me move, and the other to deal with the exposure. So Meditating goes between the two cards, and Abandoned Bunker with 14 goes all the way to the left. We now draw our fifth card from the deck. Oh, this is so... Oh my gosh. Okay, well, I'm getting lucky with a lot of movement, so I might actually win this one. Followed is fantastic. Look, we move, but they move, but I don't care. I'm already ahead of them. All right, let's finish up with our plan to move with the campfire. Man, I think I might win this turn, because just look how much movement I have. It's ridiculous. Okay, so first we find an abandoned bunker. We're going to use some survival to actually, I guess, go through the tunnels underneath. Let's say that's what we're doing, and move one. That is going to take one damage from Dread because he doesn't have a survival card available. So he's one from death. One rad or one damage, he's gone. But I do leave the perps a bit behind and move to the Great Dust Bowl with no effect. I'm pretty happy about that because some of the effects are pretty negative. And there are only three cards left, so any of these could be the guy. All right, now followed. I'm going to move, then they're going to move. I might win right here. Let's see. Ah, nope. Twister Valley. At the start of an investigation, swap the first and last card in the row. Now that's only going to affect me if I'm there when a turn starts, so not impactful right now. And the perps do move up to the Tulsa Melts, getting rid of the Sauron Valley, but I think they're too far behind to catch up. All right, now the Judge Station. No, I mean, I got two movement. I, I got to go for it. I could win. I mean, this, this would heal me too and let the perps catch up, which wouldn't really matter at all, but I just, yeah, I just got to do it. I just got to do it. All right, so I'm going to spend my last food my last food, but nothing else is calling for food right now, to move again. So I'm going to just go through the judge station. Okay, here we go. 50-50 chance. Hey, there we go. I did not expect to win this one. I thought we were going to have another Deep Space D6 situation on our hands, but I did manage to find Max Normal well ahead of the perps. And with none of my judges dead, this is by far the best I've done in the game. I've only won once before out of six plays. Now, I will note, there's a good amount of luck in the game. I got a ton of these movement symbols. If I hadn't, the game might have gone completely differently. Also, I was playing on easy mode. If you play on hard mode, every time you meet the perps, which I did twice in the game, you have some terrible stuff happen to you. So, uh, with that, I probably wouldn't have won, because there's also more locations to get through in hard mode. But yeah, on easy mode, with some uh, movement abilities showing up, we managed to pull it out and save the Earth. So, thanks, Max. You're our good friend now. So from all three of our radiation-filled judges, good gaming, everyone, and we'll see you at the next stop.